good morning this is Jean here Jean true love from true love quotes for you um, I'm coming to you from the other side of my sign room um, before I get into my little tutorial today I just wanted to show you I have these um, lovely fabric uh, storage cubes that were sort of gray and brown and blue and all I did I I was working on uh, organizing some of my sewing room um, over the weekend all I did was take a 10 inch square and a little bit of Elmer's glue stick and I just cut out the handle and the little uh, window here and I um, glued, glued the front uh, glued the fabric on the front of my little um, storage cubes I, I was just so thrilled I didn't do the all of them and it's raw edge I just I just wanted to perk them up so um, I've organized a little bit on this side of my sewing room um, but I have a little tutorial for you today again um, just a little tutorial for um, gift ideas and what I've made um, I have made a tea cozy I had had a few requests to make a tea cozy this is the little tea cozy I've made I show you how to make the pattern super super simple um, but I have to explain <laughs> that I I messed up I messed up a little bit um, when I was making it because this was my original tea cozy uh, it's a sweet little Mickey Mouse tea cozy um, and as you can see I put binding I put binding all the way around the edges oh I must show I must excuse me I'll just get this piece of paper oops I should have I should have um I should have had this before um, because I want to read something to you I had made this tea cozy a while ago and I had used fabric lining and insulbrite which insulbrite is like a metallicized um, heat resistant uh, batting um, that I used for this tea cozy awesome I use the three layers on each side of my tea cozy and then I put the right side I put the uh, wrong sides together with a raw seam and I bound the top edge and the bottom edge as you can see lovely right well I I went to I was doing this one <laughs> And I tell you that I'm going to buy the top edge and the bottom edge. I I completely for, missed that step, and I put the I put the pretty sides together. I always say pretty sides together, and I just come up with a seam, so there's no binding. But I have used four layers of of this for this tea cozy. I have used the outside layer, a layer of batting, a layer of insulbrite, and the lining. So on each side, I have used four layers, and then I bound the bottom. The reason I was doing that was I was trying to, I was trying to um, find the insulbrite packaging, and I, I had lost it. I had, I had it, and um, could to, to, so you could refer to what I'm exactly talking about. But I went online and I was reading the uh, manufacturer specifications for insulbrite, and this is what I learned about the insulbrite that is being used in um, heat resistant products um insole bright white insulated lining which is it comes 36 inches by 45 um keep it hot or keep it cold with needle punched insulated lining used in hot pads oven mitts casserole warmers lunch bags and picnic baskets um uh, oh it's cut off it's breathable letting moisture escape um keep out the cold winter chill and the hot summer heat use in shades draperies draft stoppers fireplace covers and water heater covers um water pre resistant not heat proof use with at least one layer of cotton batting when dealing with heat projects no pre-wash necessary machine wash and dry so i it says i didn't realize that um, when I had made this tea cozy, which obviously is a heat insulating product to keep my teapot warm, um, my tea hot, um, I didn't realize I should have used this with a batting as well. This is just fabric lining and insulbrite. So I learned something. Um, when I was doing this, when I sort of did my homework, so this is four layers on each side. Now you might see that I 
haven't quilted this. I didn't quilt it. I didn't quilt. I didn't quilt this one. I've had this one and I've washed this one. Um, by all means, you can quilt the fabric and then cut it out or do your sandwich and then quilt it however you wish to do it. I didn't feel I need to quilt this uh, tea cozy because it's just sort of, as I say in my tutorial, just sort of sitting there. It's not doing anything. It's not shifting about. The way I did this by mistake, as you'll see, I'm not going to edit it out. It's not a mistake. I didn't, I, I completely did it so I eliminated the part about binding. As I said, I, I, I sort of messed it up. Instead of putting the wrong sides together, I put the right sides together and sewed it. Therefore, I end up with a raw seam inside. The other way I did it, there's no raw seam. But I'm not bothered. It's a tea cozy, right? Who cares if there's a raw seam? But it has a nice finished bound edge. And I show you how I bind that with my um, prepackaged double fold binding. And again, the way I've done this, I, sh I could have, if I'd realized, I'm doing it this way. I could have inserted a little bit of ribbon for a little tie on the top there. I, I didn't again it's just sort of evolved but i'm thrilled the way it turned out um yeah i'm really really pleased and with the four layers i am assured that this is going to keep my tea which we drink tons of um nice and hot and again i show you how to do the pattern super super simple with a piece of eight and a half by eleven piece of copy paper eight and a half inches by eleven i say eight inches by eleven it's an eight and a half inch piece of co white copy paper to make the pattern and I'd give you the measurements, real super simple. Very, very easy, super simple project. You do need your four uh, components, your fabric, your lining, your batting, and your insole bright. So I hope you enjoy this tutorial, folks. And I'm telling you, I'll rest assured that this is a practical, nice tea cozy. Your, your tea will stay hot for a long time. So I hope you enjoy it very much. Oh, I also um, advise that you put perhaps a darker, maybe even a, a bit of a darker border, because if your tea does spill, that you're not gonna get your pretty tea cozy immediately stained with tea um, sitting on the countertop. That's why I put the darker one, my black one, my Mickey Mouse one, and my burgundy here. So I hope you enjoy this little tutorial. Again, nice little present for somebody who drinks a lot of tea, as we do. All right, see you folks, bye. what we're going to be needing for my tea my tea cozy here quite a lot of stuff right well um, as I was explaining in the beginning or I will explain about the fact that you're using Insulbrite plus a batting okay um, and I had found that out when I went online and looked at the actual Insulbrite uh, information interesting so I have some Insulbrite here I haven't cut anything out as you can you as you can see because I'm going to Square back right to the how we make the pattern. But for this project, you're going to be needing insole bright. You're going to be needing a batting. Now, the, the insole bright is polyester, has polyester in it, according to the directions or according to the um, manufacturer's specifications. I'm just using that, and I'm using a cotton batting. I'm also using my fabric of my choice. Look how lovely and delightful. I've had this fabric um, forever. I think it's a... Oh, I don't know. It's a, ever so old, um, but I'm going to be using the border print. Hopefully you have seen that in the beginning when it's all done. I'm using a, a lovely, um, nice gingham, a little tiny gingham. You won't see that. That's on the inside. And you're going to be needing some binding, some contrasting or matching binding. So I'm going to put that aside for now. Um, and what we're going to concentrate on here is hopefully, let me just, let me just wind this down. Let me wind my camera down. And hopefully you can see the um, the markings. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm now going to just uh, go over with Sharpie. I'll be right back. So hopefully you can see this a little bit better. What I've done is I have a piece of copy paper. 
that this is going to be our pattern and I'm going I'm, I'm giving you the um, the measurements to make our curve uh, you could probably just eyeball a nice curve but this is pretty specific and I quite like it what you're going to do with your what is this an 8 by 11 sheet of paper you're going to start um, your a um, measurement this first one up here this first one up here is half an inch half an inch from this point to the edge of the paper this next little dash we have here is one and a half inches from here to here I'm sorry I don't know centimeters I'm in America I don't know what centimeters are but that is one and a half inches from this dash to this dash what we are going to be doing is just connecting these dashes these inside dashes this dash here is from the corner of our paper to the dash is four inches four inches from there to there coming down here on our paper from that dash line over to the edge of the paper is one and a half inches getting a bit narrower this dash paper this dash is one inch and this dash down here is one inch okay so that is your that is your pattern now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn this to me I'm just going to connect my dashes my dash lines from there to there to there down to there and down and that is our half of our pattern as you see we are placing this pattern after I cut it out we're placing this on the fold this pattern is pretty much I'm including the um, seam allowance so it's it's not going to be quite as big there's our seam allowance but this is my cutting line there okay now as I have explained in the beginning you are going to be needing two of the fabric two of the lining two of your batting and two insole bright and as I have said in the beginning why we need batting plus insole bright that has been already established so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out with my paper scissors my pattern and I'm going to with my like this this fabric I've been I've used a million times here I'm going to fold I'm going to put my fabric and I can do it this way on the fold for me I have a I have a um, I have enough of it I'm going to do it on the fold here making sure my cherries match up nicely here's my fold so when I go to cut this out from here to there I have one nice bit of tea uh, uh, tea cozy so I'm going to do that twice so as you can see if you have I've, I've used this fabric already if you as you can see if you have a whole um, wide piece you probably only need about you're going to have to cut two of these you're probably only going to need about a half a um, let's see uh, let me just see what this is uh, about two-thirds of a yard or something like that for your fabric and your lining and your batting something like that um, or a scrap if you have it um, you, by all means you could you could have either side uh, t both sides different if you wanted to but I'm going to now cut out my pattern and I'm going to cut out all of my pieces again two fabric two lining two batting and two insole bright placed on the fold as you can see I have cut my two fabric my two lining my two insole bright and my two batting I had just folded my batting did everything and I put everything on the fold okay so now what we're going to do a very very basic simple construction what we're going to do is we're just going to be working with one each of our our fabric and then our batting we're just going to be making a little sandwich here we're just going to be layering these in this order the insole bright now the insole bright the instructions are where the manufacturer says there's no right or wrong side I absolutely see a difference and this shiny side as opposed to this more batting side they're both sparkly but this is much more sparkly and to me this has more met metallic in it to, to, to uh, um, stave off the heat it, it, they say there's no right or wrong side but that doesn't make 
any sense to me whatsoever. This this looks to me uh, much much better, much uh, more metallic. So I have one, two, three, and then my lining fabric. Now don't worry about the raw edges because we're going to bind all the way around. This is a very simple construction, as I said. So my gingham has really no right or wrong side. So I'm just going to put that there. Now you're going to be saying, well, if you're going to be sewing these together, that's eight layers plus the binding. What I'm going to do is right now, I'm going to secure, I'm going to clip this or pin this. I'm going to secure it all the way around nice and tightly, nice and, and, um, um, all straight and no wrinkles or anything and I'm going to stitch about a quarter of an inch maybe a little bit more because of the bulk all the way around here making sure nothing shifts so I will go over and I'll either pin or probably clip this and I'm just going to secure all of these um, all of these layers together I'm going to do that both both sides this is one side of my tea cozy and that's the other side what i am going to come back and do after i secure the edges i'm just going to come back and very carefully i'm going to trim away i'm going to trim away the bulk the bulk of the insubrite and the batting i don't really want all of that bulk in my seam i'm not going to trim away the lining i'm just going to trim away the bulk of the insubrite and the lining just to the stitching there as you see, I've already sewn one of my little sandwich layers together. And you might say, well, why don't you quilt this? By all means, before you sew the layers together or after you sew the layers, you could quilt this. I have made several of these and I haven't quilted them because they're sort of not going anywhere. They're all just sort of contained within everything. And um, I wash them on a gentle wash and I touch them up with a hot iron so I don't need that I, I don't find the need to quilt but by all means if you wanted to quilt your fabric and make a quilted tea cozy you could by all means I've already done that one and as you see I have all my clips here and I'm just going to start at one, one side a little bit more than quarter of an inch because there's quite a bit of bulk as you can see I've, I have my lovely clips just holding this together I don't have a walking foot. Sometimes the fabric can shift a little bit, but I'm fine. I'm not bothered. Just go right around. And as I say, this is four layers, but I'm going to be trimming away the insulbrite and the batting. But it won't go anywhere because it's we've stitched it into our seam. I'm just going to be getting rid of the bulk of those layers there. but it's secure in the seam. This is so pretty. <laughs> I like these clips. I guess they're sort of a modern invention. They're awesome. A lot of people use like binder clips from like the um, office supply store. That's a good idea. this gently so when I get here there's no tucks or folds and everything stay pretty I have my two stitched together layers my four layers and all I'm going to be doing um you might want to use a smaller pair of scissors as you can see I made that a little bit bigger than a quarter of an inch to make my job a little bit easier this is a little bit tedious but you're wanting to push away those the, the uh, lining and the fa top fabric there and just with a pair of sharp scissors just trim back the line, uh, the uh, insulbrite and the batting. I finished cutting away the insulbrite and the batting. Now, quite a few of you are probably going to say, why in the world didn't you just cut your insulbrite and your batting smaller, half an inch smaller all around? Which I could have done, but um, I wanted to be assured, absolutely assured that, that my insulbrite and my batting is being caught in that seam. Sometimes if you cut it a bit small, shorter, it, you, um, you, you, you don't catch that. But by all means, if that's that, you could do that. I've done that a million times. But this case, I really need, because I'm not quilting this, I really need this, the batting and the insulbrite and the lining and this all to be really nice 
um, and together there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put the right sides together, the pretty sides of my fabric together, and I'm going to go over and I'm going to stitch right around this whole entire um, top curve here, okay? Now, I'm going to clip this, and again, that's now only four, maybe five um, layers there that your domestic machine will, will get through nicely. I'm going to go clip that, and I'm going to stitch it around. I'm going to do that twice. I'm stitching my... Uh, two, two sides together and when you do this you want to be very careful I have clipped it but because we're, we're working with quite a few bits of layers here some of them can get sort of folded up and tucked up tucked under or tucked into your seam so you want to make sure as you're as you're stitching this that everything is nice and cleared out of the seam everything is in the seam and not any nasty folds or tucks as you can see I'm stitching this about half an inch or so to get all of the um, to get all of the uh, the the um, fabrics in here, but I'm not I'm not going through um, the I'm going through the bulk of the uh, interfacing in the um, uh, the batting in the the um, insole break, but my machine is doing it. But I don't have that bulk in the seam there, and I just don't want this other stitching that I stitched the layers together to show. So I'm just being careful that I everything is nice and smoothed out and there's no tucks or folds. I will turn this inside out and make sure that everything is nice and straight and everything is nice and in the seam where it should be. And then I'm going to do this a second time. I wonder what it is with me that I, I reinforce everything and I, I go back on things. My grandmother, who, who um, when I was a little, little girl, um, showed me on her treadle sewing machine how to sew, always backstitched an awfully lot. So maybe that's what it was. But actually, it was my, sev my seventh grade um, home ec teacher that really taught me how to sew. So, oh, look at how pretty. Isn't this sweet? So there is, oh no, oh no, <laughs> I did this wrong, but it turned out nice. I only have to bind the bottom edge. Oh, I meant to put, oh, look at that. I meant to put the wrong sides together, but instead I stitched that, but look, oh, <laughs> oh well, look at that. My tea cozy's almost done. The way I did it before is I put the wrong sides together and just stitched it, and then I bound the whole thing. Oh, look at that. I do have, I do have a raw seam there, but oh my word. Look at that. Well, that, this makes total sense, like, doesn't it? So I have a nice seam. Actually, I could have put a, I could have put now, now that I say that, all right, live and learn. I could have put inside this here. This is so much easier. Isn't that funny? I could have put a little hanging loop on there. Yeah, there you go. So now all I have to do, well, I'm going to go back and I'm going to reinforce that seam. Oh, look at that. All I have to do is bind this bottom edge. This is not how I made my other one. Wow. You see what I, you see my other one where it, well, I'll show it to you afterwards. Um, my other one, I put the wrong, the, the uh, lining sides together just like that but the raw edge and then I just stitched around that raw edge and then I bound the whole thing I like this better why didn't I think of this this is like so easy oh my goodness yeah so now what I'm having to do I'm just gonna have to bind that bottom edge isn't that funny my tea cozy's almost done <laughs> oh that's so funny <laughs> I've turned it back so the right the, the other way around inside out and I'm stitching this seam again to secure it now I do have a raw seam I wanted to show you up close this is how I made my other one and I don't have any raw seams inside there are no raw seams in here because what I did is I just put the lining to the lining raw edges and I stitched around and then I I added this binding all the way around I added it on the bottom I first added it on the top there I bound this edge and then I bound the bottom and that way I had sort of tucked in well I did that by machine but it's sort of that's nah, all right 
um, but this one doesn't have it. But it, but I quite like this. This is okay. This adds a little bit more interest. It really does. The binding does add a little bit more interest. And I don't have any raw seams. But ah, live and learn. So so you can do it either that way, lining to lining, raw edges around, or you can put pretty sides to pretty side and have raw edges inside. Um, am I so inclined to bind these this? raw edge I might I, I might um, oh I might not <laughs> um, maybe again making sure that you're stitching exactly where you want to be stitching and uh, isn't that funny though I made that about six months ago or so so anyway, this is nice. This is stitched beautifully. Um, I'm not bothered. <laughs> I'm not bothered. It's raw edges. Who cares? Um, so I will, though. I will. By all means, if you're, if you're bothered about the raw edges, the, the, the um, raw seams, knock yourself out. Bind them. <laughs> um, I'm going, oh, I like this. This is so, so pretty. So that's a nice finished edge there. Super, 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 super duper. And now I'm going to bind just like I did this one. I am going to bind this bottom edge here. I'm seeing this from the manufacturers. I double fold wide bias binding. It has uh, four creases in it. One, two, three creases. Wide binding. And it comes off a card. Again, if you've watched me a million times, you'll know that it comes off one side is narrower than the other. But I'm not doing that application now because it's too thick. It's too thick to catch all of that, I think. I usually do that. I just sort of enclose that raw seam and stitch it, and I know it's going to be stitched on the outside, on the back side. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to open up my binding. I'm going to start at a side seam. I'm going to open it up like that and I'm going to place this raw this this edge here of the binding to the raw edge and and I'm going to stitch on the first fold I'm going to keep it about an inch or so above my side seam making sure everything is all tucked out of the way I'm going to have this edge against the raw edge and I'm going to put it in my machine and I'm going to stitch on that fold maybe maybe one stitch whoops where's my foot pedal uh, maybe one stitch inside inside to allow for the turning making sure again so important that you're sitting right in front of the needle and I'm just going to inch my way around making sure everything is nice and flattened out everything is nice and nice and um straight Everything is nice and smooth, I should say. Hopefully you can see this. Get these raw edges out of the way. I'm just opening that up as I go along. We are stitching on the inside now by all means you could have stitched on the outside and turned it to the inside I stitch on the inside and turn it on the outside and then I can see what I'm top stitching so my stitching stays nice because I can really see it so I'm going to I'm stitching this with white thread as I do but I will when I go to top stitch this I will show you um, I will use I will oops I will use um, my, I will change color threads. Again, I'm smoothing everything so there's no, there's no nasty tucks on, it, on the lining or the front of the tea cozy. Opening this up as I go along. It's a little bit fiddly. <laughs> but so not hard. And this made it really easy. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Actually, the way I'm, the way I'm looking at that this is only 
three layers. I did not put a layer of batting in here. So that would have been, and I did it the way, um, I did it the way I was saying that you, you just sort of enclose this, you know, you sort of just enclose that like that and stitch it on. That's how I did this black binding there. But there's quite a lot. So it, almost by mistake, doing it this way, I've never constructed it with the four layers before. I sort of got it right because that would have been an awfully lot to bind, even, even having cut away our batting or making our batting smaller. So maybe by mistake, I got it right. This fabric frays a little bit. Now I'm coming to this side seam, and I don't know what I'm going to do here. I'm just going to fold it onto itself. It's a tea cozy, right? So, hopefully you can see that. Um, let me just cut this off. Let's figure out what I'm working with here. Um, now I could, oh, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up this and I'm going to make a straight stitch. Uh, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. No, I'm not because it's too I didn't allow myself enough tail. Let me just see. Yeah, I just overlapped it. I just overlapped one over the next there like that. I probably cut a little bit too big, but that's okay. And then coming there, if you can see that what I did, I just overlapped I just overlapped, turned it in, turned it in. So then when we go to turn it in, it's a nice folded, it's a nice folded edge there. Now I am going, I'm going to turn this to the, get rid of some of these threads. I'm going to turn this to the inside. Now I'm going to go and I'm going to um, change my thread, but we're going to come back and I'm going to now fold the binding. Look how beautifully that folds. It's stitched in the inside there. And I'm just going to fold it and top stitch that right along there. I'll figure out, I'll be able to figure out this, this, uh, yeah, there's where I sort of joined it right there on the side seam. I'm just going to come, I'm just going to change my thread out and I'll stitch that, I'll stitch that where I can see it and on the inside it's nice and finished off. As you can see, I have taken off my extension bed off of my sewing machine here and I'm using it as a free arm. It's much easier when you're stitching something like this as it's curved. Now we've stitched on our binding to the inside and we're turning it and you can just see how beautifully that turns just on itself as, as it comes from the manufacturers and then I'm just going slowly I'm just stitching it right along the top there like that as you can see I've changed my threads and I did start on the oh that one skipped a little bit because it's a little bit it's a little bit thick there I'll just go over that I did start um, at the side seam and I did just fold that bit under I just folded I just kept it was that wide and I just folded it under just go back there catch it a little bit I'm gonna lengthen my stitch slightly because it's a it's going through quite a few layers here I'm just I'm not pulling anything. I'm just letting the binding go exactly where it wants to from the manufacturers. And it's enclosing that seam beautifully, all of those layers. And as you can see, using the free arm makes it so much easier. I've not trimmed off the bottom seam or anything like that. It's just folding up. And I'm, and I'm covering the stitching. There's that seam. As you can see, all of this raw edge there, it's just folding up and enclosing that beautifully. And I quite like making the binding on the bottom a little bit darker um, because if you have any drips coming off or your, your teapot has um, dripped a little bit, that my perhaps my pale blue here um, would have gotten... Oops! Would have gotten um would have gotten a little bit tea stained. So the a darker binding on the bottom, I think I have it on my other one. I, I use black. Um, it does help a bit, but these wash up beautifully. Something that's not quilted. I, I always do use a, a hot iron to touch to touch it up a little bit. Um, but they wash 
everything washes up beautifully everything is machine washable here I'm going to tuck all of these threads right in there so there's except on the inside seam there's no raw there's no raw seams on the bottom here no raw edges so you can see I'm coming to that side seam where I where I started that skipped a little bit because my stitches yeah yeah there you go and I'll just clip that close I used to whiten the by bobbin, but there, there is my finished tea cozy. Beautiful, beautiful bound edge, lovely shape. And I tell you, even with the three layers of my, uh, as I explained in the beginning, even with the three layers, boy oh boy, this really does keep our teapot um, and the tea in there nice and nice and hot. So I hope you like my tea cozy, folks. Again, you can quilt it if you want. And if you're doing it this way, I'll, I'll dress it at the beginning. Put a little doodad, put a little, put a little um, self-tie or a little ribbon or something if you want to pull it up there. I'm fine with that. Oh, it's sweet. All right. Thanks again, folks. See ya. Bye.